Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the status report highlight for the 22nd of November 2016. We have a juicy status report for you again. Victor presents a video full of new animations, Adam is talking about military base changes, and don't forget to check out the full status report for Beatty showcasing all the cool wall footage from our community creators. So as many of you may know, it has been a pretty busy few weeks. We've had a good deal of experimental updates go out. For those that don't follow our posts on the official forums, I'll try and give you some perspective on what those updates have been aimed towards and what our current priorities are for 0.61. Server-side performance is one of our major goals for improvement on 0.61 Experimental. Aside from stability, server-side crashes, this has the largest impact on the actual effectiveness of major changes gameplay-wise for 0.61. When server performance drops below the acceptable line on these servers, it will reduce and impede functionality of these areas. To give you guys an example, server performance can cause issues such as, but not limited to, modifier damage application can be stuck or delayed, AI reactions and speed can be reduced, infected wolves or wild animals, door states can be reported incorrectly. Obviously, as you can see, the above issues are critical to have reduced as much as possible for 0.61 stable. In addition to that, we're looking at the issues related to infected vocalizations being too quiet, infected response to firearms types being uniform, suppressed, lower decibels ammo not having proper effect, infected able to push characters through into model geometry, potentially caused characters to be stuck or die. VoIP volume too loud, adjustment not functioning. There has been a push to experimental branch fixing some issues, characters displaying as nude in some situations, some gunshot sounds not being played for all players, a new server crash, and some adjustments for the Predator AI behavior. So get testing this latest experimental branch build, while the team march forward to getting 0.61 to stable branch. And here's a quick reminder of the 0.61 milestone goals. Server login queue, merge of new audio technology from Arma 3 Eden update, Update of weapon sounds to new audio technology. Dynamic spawning of infected. Predators. Dynamic shadows. Network synchronization improvements. And new server browser. We also have a nice little update from lead designer Peter, who mentions the problem with lighting and its overexposure to the camera in the new renderer. Some of you may have noticed when lighting a flare or other light source that the area surrounding you that isn't lit is extremely dark and you can't see anything. The team are aware of this and they are working on a solution and we can expect to see changes anytime soon in the 0.61 experimental releases. And in the future for 0.62 versions, we would like to tackle the daytime and nighttime lighting to pull out more potential from the new renderer combined visual updates for environment. Another thing that I would like to mention from Peter, as I know a lot of you have been wondering about it, is that vehicles are being worked on too. Count in, they are getting so much love implementation-wise, so Peter would hope we will be able to get some of these changes in 0.61 to make vehicles much more reliable and a pleasure to drive. Lead gameplay programmer Merrick also mentions there's new server performance improvements that won't be enabled, as they have to deal with some new server crashes first, and that vehicle synchronization is priority number one now, as the team want to bring back vehicles as soon as possible. But there are two blockers, client-side correction and bad simulation, when two or more players are inside the vehicle. Lead engine programmer Fido mentions implemented terrain light reflection, variable color of trees, to add a bit more of an autumn feel to Chernerus, and managed to progress with implementation of the new simul weather true sky technology that we use for rendering the sky and clouds. These are merely some experimental visual effects, adding a little bit of drama to the world. Lead animator Victor would like to share with us today a video that demonstrates some of the new player character features. We still have a lot to do to make all transitions work perfectly, and we are also in the process of refining the animations. There are a couple of interesting things in the video, however, I would like to describe them for you in more detail. First of all, you will notice new camera and movement. The animations have been polished so they feel more natural and fluent. The camera system has been redone, and now we finally are able to adjust the camera to our needs. The version you see is still in work in progress, and we are constantly working on it. But in short, new camera options allow us to adjust the camera per stance or even per animation, if needed. One of the most visible changes in the character movement is the possibility to interrupt almost any animation. This gives players greater control over the character. We have talked about this in previous status reports a few times already, but it is a really big change compared to the old system. The way the character looks around is also different. Now we have the ability to use poses for look at things or aiming. By creating aim spaces, we are able to adjust character poses properly to certain angles, which gives us perfect control over how the animations look in the game. Gestures, actions and animations now are divided into two groups. Some are full body animations, and some are upper body or other body part animations. This had to be done to allow movement while eating, drinking, greeting, and many other situations. It's important, however, that all of them are interruptible, as you can see in the video. With the lying down gesture, most of these actions are made of three parts, in, loop, and out. We play in animation at the beginning, then the character starts doing actions like chopping trees, and when player releases the mouse button, out is activated. 
Hopefully you enjoy this small video preview. For the next couple of weeks, we will be focusing on implementing animations for weapons, new combat, and of course, continue improving the player character. Now let's see what map designer Adam has to say about the new military camps dotted around Chernarus, as a lot of people have wondered, what the hell is this camp in Sosnovka Pass all about? Which currently is the only small military base implemented in 0.61's experimental branch. The team are currently discussing the possibilities of testing these changes within 0.61, but if not, then they may make an appearance in 0.62. Oh, but I hear you ask, what are these military changes? Well, in total, nine military locations will be added, being either represented through a military roadblock of different sizes or through smaller military camps similar to the one in Starry Sobor, the aim being to have more locations that would resemble humanity's struggle to tackle the Day Zero situation. And with that being said, the team has decided to significantly reduce the tent count in the locations of Northwest Airfield and Moschino tents, while also giving them a slightly new layout. The tents removed will be used to flesh out these nine military bases as well as Kamenk's military base to give we, the survivors, more places to explore, more military bases to loot up, and not just have the epic loots and epic PvP situations revolve around Mishkino tents and Northwest Airfield. So with that being said, the ruined remains of Kamenk's military base just north of Severograd will have tents scattered among the ruins. Not many survivors visit this military base in the past. Let's hope this can kick some more life into this area. But it's not only Kamenk's military getting some love with these extra tents, the latest military attraction Tizzy is also getting some attention. Seeing as survivors have got to traverse the whole of Chernarus to get to the northwest corner to arrive at Tizzy military base for those epic loots, a large military camp was added into the perimeter of the base. And of course keep in mind that Tizzy is not yet considered to be done, and this military zone will change in the future. So, how many of you brave survivors out there are looking forward to new military zones to explore, loot up, and meet and greet other survivors the only way we know how. Well, let's talk about this in the comment section below. And that's all for this week's status report for the 22nd of November 2016. As always, I recommend you read the status report in full for yourselves for the most amount of information that they hold. All links will be in the description. And I'll see you peeps next time.